Now in this video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different than what I typically do. I'm actually gonna talk a bunch. So recently, a few YouTubers, including Russ from Path Less Pedaled, have been talking about restoring older bikes. And in Russ's case, specifically 90s bikes. And he released a video a week ago talking about why you should not buy a 90s mountain bike. Uh, and he kind of called me out in this video. So this is in part a response. Also, later on today, Russ and I will be doing a live stream on his channel talking about the pros and cons of 90s mountain bikes. So to kick off my list of five reasons why you should buy a 90s mountain bike, top of my list is nostalgia. For those of you that have followed my channel, my first bike restoration video on this channel was of a 94 Kona Explosive. Now, the reason that build was nostalgic for me was because I got my first mountain bike in the 90s. It was a giant Yukon SE that had a threaded headset with uh, an in-house brand suspension fork. It ran, I think, Alivio components, and I thought it was a super cool bike. Later, when I was in college in the late 90s, I bought my first uh, more real mountain bike. I think it was a 98 Kona Caldera. It was actually a mid-year, I think between 98 and 99, and had a Marzocchi bomber fork on it. It was sweet. It was steel. It rode awesome. It was way better than the, the giant Yukon that I had had that actually had gotten stolen, I think in the first few months that I was in college. The Kona though was awesome. I loved the geometry. I loved how it rode. It really performed a lot better than, than the giant Yukon did. And I always regretted selling that Kona. Over the years, I've been restoring lots of bikes. I have five kids that have grown up on restored bikes and I always wanted that steel hardtail, that Kona experience. And so I had been looking for a long time for a really good Kona frame and the Kona explosive frame was perfect to do that retro build and to kind of modernize it also. For those that have seen that one, I, I welded disc brake tabs on the frame and upgraded the suspension on it and it was just awesome. It rode really well. Joe Murray's designs were way ahead of their time and it's just an awesome bike to ride. That bike is now being ridden regularly by my youngest son. And it's a, it's a bike that will last forever as long as, well, <laughs> he's been riding it pretty hard. So maybe, uh, hopefully it'll last through him. But that's my number one reason why you should buy a 90s mountain bike. There's something special about those 90s mountain bikes. And that brings me to number two, versatility. In fact, I think this is the reason for the saying, just buy a 90s mountain bike. It's because they are so versatile. There's a lot of functionality. And to me, that pinnacle of functionality for a 90s mountain bike, and when I say just get a 90s mountain bike, I'm actually thinking of something around 94, 95, so mid 90s to the late 90s. And for me, it, it's a steel bike, probably designed by Joe Murray, like a Kona or a Voodoo. Although I love things like this, this Ritchie Ultra, which is kind of more of a late 80s, even though it's a 91, it's more of that late 80s model. And it feels very similar to my Ritchie Ascent. But there's a versatility in those steel, mid to late 90s mountain bikes that is really versatile. It's past the beginning of the 90s where there was a lot of innovation going on, a lot of different standards, a lot of different bottom brackets and headsets, and you get, one and a quarter and one inch and you get threaded and threadless and you get brands trying new things. By the mid to late 90s, those standards started to coalesce into something a little more consistent and you started hitting um, eight speed drivetrains. So you start having wheels that you can actually put a modern drivetrain on it. You can set it up with a one by 10 drivetrain without changing the wheels. So there's a lot of versatility and most of those by then are also one and one eighth headsets and you can set them up with a threadless headset. You can put a modern-ish modern, modern -ish fork on it, although you can still find 26 inch forks, but those mid 2000s, 2010, 26 inch forks, like the ones that I've put on some of my, my mountain bikes, are still available and you can find them and you can upgrade them. 
You can also put some really awesome rigid forks on it for bike packing. You can turn it into a gravel bike. There's so much that you can do with that 90s mountain bike, especially when you're looking at that late 90s, that I, I believe is the reason people say just buy a 90s mountain bike. Now the next reason kind of follows from that one, and that's the customizability or custom, cus, yeah, you can customize your 90s mountain bike. Whether that's taking your 90s mountain bike and making it into a townie and putting a rack on it or racks so that you can haul stuff around town, or perhaps turning it into a gravel bike, customizing it with new or old or vintage or, or mid-modern parts, whatever it might be, you make that bike yours. If it's like me with the Kona Explosive, I wanted that nostalgic mountain bike feel on cross-country trails, and so that build was very much a cross-country build with modern upgrades. Now, I could have taken that same bike, put a rigid fork on it, put uh, V-brakes, uh, turned it into a bike packing bike, and it would have been awesome for that. So making that bike yours and customizing it for your needs, your wants, is one of the cool reasons why a 90s mountain bike is so awesome. Which brings me to number four, that <laughs> this one was on the list for Russ, and that's price. Now, I don't entirely agree that, that 90s mountain bikes are expensive. The cost of entry for a 90s mountain bike is significantly lower than it would be for a new uh, true mountain bike from this era. The cost for a 90s mountain bike, depending on where you could go, if you're gonna buy the frame, the fork, the seat, the seat post, all of the components separate on eBay, you're probably gonna pay a whole lot of money. Now, if you can find a good serviceable 90s mountain bike for under $100, and you spend maybe another $100 on, on tires and other components, you're into it a couple hundred dollars, for a bike that is gonna last eons longer than anything that you buy in the department store for around that same price. So the cost of entry on a 90s mountain bike, something that already has lasted for over 20 years and is gonna perhaps last probably another 50 to 100 easily if it's maintained, is a great deal. The cost of entry is low. Now, if you are very picky and say you're a collector and you're looking for that specific Yeti frame, it may cost a little bit more, but at that the cost of entry still is significantly lower than say a brand new carbon frame and the components that might go with it when you're looking at two thousand plus dollars. Uh, a high-end 90s mountain bike for around a thousand dollars, although that's not what I'm talking about here, is still significantly lower priced than say a brand new 2022 mountain bike. So affordable, they are affordable. There may be some tools to buy, but not many. And if you're not a tool guy, take it to your local shop. It costs the same to do a basic tune on an old bike as a new bike, I think, typically. I typically fix my own bike, so I don't really know. <laughs> Now this last one might offend a few people, but I do think that there's a lot of people who are overbiked. Most people who are looking for a basic ride, something to get out and ride on nice, easy community trails that aren't at a bike park, aren't doing big jumps, taking big air, or taking black diamond runs down really technical rocks, they don't need a high-end carbon frame full suspension that costs five to $10,000. And for most of the needs that people have, a 90s mountain bike really fits the bill. They want to get out, on basic trails, some paved, some dirt, maybe gravel, and a 90s mountain bike that's customized to them and their needs is really perfect. So there's a lot more that I could add to this list. I really do have a love for vintage mountain bikes. There is a lot of that nostalgia. And later on tonight, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Russ from Pathless Pedaled and I will be doing a live stream on his channel debating the pros and cons of 90s mountain bikes. So if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe and look for opportunities to give those old things new life, which is perhaps 
a number six. And I'll see you on the next video. Ciao. I've got new rims for this Ritchie Ultra now too. If you didn't catch that video where I went, I showed my Ritchie Ultra to Tom Ritchie, went riding with him, and my rims cracked on that ride. If you didn't see that video, check it out. Um, it was a couple weeks ago. It was, it was fun. <laughs>